the um, ascending the ascending process that the Lord spiritually can take us through to get us lined properly. I know that you're probably familiar with the scripture that says that the, the head of Jesus is God and the head of every man is Jesus and the head of the woman is the man. And you see that um, in the scriptures. Uh, and of course, a lot of times, you know, sometimes it's used to just control and this and that. But what if that was actually a, a, a picture of spiritual ascent? And here's what I mean. Um, the um, uh, Mary of Bethany, she comes and in her heart it is as if it is the bride of Christ and she, um, she honors the Lord beyond just being the 12 disciples in the same room who are wanting to feed the poor and it flows, it ascends, and so it ascends to him. And then you see the son, the man, the son, um, and you see that then in the, the prodigal son where he begins to recognize, he begins to feast with the father, and he begins to recognize that there is a, a higher thing. And so the emphasis was, in her heart, it was, it's about, it's about him about him but when it becomes about him he makes it about the father and he sends it on up and it begins to ascend higher and it begins to ascend unto the father so that all are swept up in the, the fragrance of of not you know and because jesus would say what's about the father uh, the words i speak this is jesus the words i speak are not my own. The works I do are not my own, they're the Father's. He says that. And so I see it as a, an ascending truth that keeps going up and keeps as almost, as it were, changing the emphasis. Okay, the emphasis is the bride. Okay, the bride's emphasis is the son. The son's emphasis is the father. And till that fragrance has covered everything, <clears throat> All right, so um, let's look in uh, Luke 15 again. And um, and verse 11. And Jesus said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And uh, the father divided his living unto them. All right. So there is a, um, a understanding in the minds of many Christians that the Lord is their provider and there is a, in the minds of sons of God who are finding Christ that the Lord is their portion. Two different things. Um, now we know that the Lord provides for all of us. So, but the emphasis is an emphasis of the heart. David said, "The Lord is my portion," and the priests, the priests, were told, "You have no portion in Israel. The Lord is your portion." That 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 was. Your heart is supposed to be here. You know, give me at least a portion of the people so that I can be their portion. And um, so we see with the prodigal son, we see him having this other mentality. He's lived in the father's house. He has partaken of the highest things that the father could give, but they were they were sort of belonged to the house, to the family. And so at a certain juncture, he says, I'm mature now. <laughs> I'm mature. Give me. Give me. And 
and he says, give me the portion of goods. In other words, be my provider. Provide me with your things, God. Provide me with your things, Father. All right. I don't see anything sinful in that. I just see a, a wrong motive. I see, you know, I see a self-centered motive. I see something else at work, and that's why I got in trouble. That's why it all ended badly. It didn't end badly because he said, you know, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to bust hell wide open when I get out of here. It, it ends badly because we're out of that flow. Remember, from, from the father down to the son, down to the bride, down to, um, and then and then we get in that that number, we get into that placement, and we break the chain of the flow of selfless giving, and of making it about someone else. We break the chain, and when we break that chain and make it about us, everything starts going bad. And you know, and when I say bad, I don't necessarily mean horrible or. You know, you have a car wreck and now you're paralyzed or stuff like that. I just mean things, you know, things, how about this? Things feel out of whack. Even, even when they shouldn't. Because you go, well, I don't know why I feel this way. Or I don't know why am I dissatisfied or da 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 da, you know. Well, um, it's because the, the chain has been broken. Selfishness has entered in. And when I say selfishness, I don't mean greedy selfishness. <laughs> I'm gonna have everything. Yeah, I just want everything for me. We're just talking about making decisions based on self first. You know, I mean, that's where the, my, my motive, me, you know. Now, we deceive ourselves and we say, well, I'm going to do this for you, but we're really doing it for ourselves, you know what I mean? I'm going to, I'm going to bless you, <laughs> you know, we get more blessing out of it or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so there is this contrast, and you see it in the scriptures, and you see it with David, and you see it with others, you see it with the, the priest, you see where the Lord has become their portion, meaning I'm not after something for me i'm after something for you that i i would like to get in the flow of the divine nature and this, and peter tells us in his epistle that we've been part, made partakers of the divine nature but what good is it if it never affects us you know, if it never touches us, if we're never motivated by the divine nature, we're only motivated by the corrupt nature. You know. And then we fall back on, but at least I'm a son of God. At least I'm, you know, I'm born again. I'm a born son. I'm born in the family, so, so I'm okay. Well, yeah, okay. Well, you are okay, except, you know, as far as your salvation. But, you know, where is that, where is that true sense of peace? Where is that true sense of being in the middle of the will of God? Where is that true sense of confidence that it doesn't matter what's coming? It doesn't matter what's coming. I am, the Lord is my portion, and nobody can take my portion away. Nobody can take that away. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so um, we have the prodigal son <clears throat> realize, and we talked about that a couple of sessions back. <clears throat> we have this, that prodigal son realize he's in the hog pen. Things have gone bad. He doesn't have the, 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 the food, the feast, the, the meal, the fellowship that goes with that that he had back in the father's house. He doesn't have all of that. <clears throat> And he, and he comes to himself and he says, you know, what am I doing here? This is stupid. I know a place where I will be received and, you know, but he's still religious. So he's going to go, I'm going to repent my way into this instead of son my way into it. The son. Does that make sense? Because we, we make repentance the whole deal instead of our heart toward the father to give him his son. All right. So he, so he 
decides to come back and you know the story and he said you know father forgive you know da 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 and the father before he even gets it out of his mouth the father kisses him puts the best ring on the best shoes the best robe he treats him like the son instead of a born again son this is way higher treatment from the father way higher man you know, it's something every one of us would want. We can't even imagine that the God who made us become our father and we align ourselves with the father and the son and how our spirit would soar in that environment. We don't, we just, it's just, there's no way to describe that, uh, but only to say, Holy Spirit, open our hearts to to hear and to be drawn. May we not just be flies, but moths that are drawn to the light. So <clears throat> he comes back, and as we've talked about before, the transition begins to happen. He sees the Father's heart. He sees the Father's action. He goes, this is so far. I have done nothing but wrong, and he's treating me better than I was when I didn't do anything wrong. What is up? Praise God. Good question. <laughs> Good question. What is going on here? This does not figure religiously in my mind. Amen. Amen. Stop being religious and just love Jesus. <laughs> and just go, go for the Lord. You know, just go for the Lord. Just say, Lord, I want you. And I don't even know what all this means, but I... I believe there's something to this. All right, so the prodigal is that he's in, the, he's in it. It's happening around him, and he's got to make the transition. So then the father takes him to the altar, and he breaks out the fatted calf, and he kills the calf in front of him. And he begins to describe, he begins to show the relationship that they have in, in their hearts, the father and the son with selfless giving. And the son gets on board, man. He starts making merry with his father. He goes, I love this better than I love the other. Okay. So now the son's emphasis is not on the food, the bread of the father's house or the father's house, but the father. And to feast with the father in the area of the things that our Heavenly Father holds important, which has nothing to do with technology or self-driving cars or, you know, has nothing to do with any of the things that we hold so important, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, so I was thinking about that in relationship well, let me just say this. So the father, so the, the, the born son, the born again son, called the prodigal son, begins to discover the son within him because the father is revealing him. Remember what we read in Galatians 4? That at a certain juncture, after you're born again, God wants to reveal his son in you. That's the plan. So we did it. Jesus is telling the story because Jesus knows. <laughs> okay. You know, so he, tell, so, so he tells the story and he lives out the story. He, he enacts the story with an altar and with a sacrifice. And now God is his portion, not the house, not the things, not the food, but God is his portion. All right. So you have this, you have this with... Um, Abraham offering up Isaac. That's over in Genesis 22. You don't have to turn there. Most of you know the story. God spoke to Abraham, said, Take now thy son, thine only son, thine son whom thou lovest. Who's that sound like? Jesus, the only son, the son whom he loved, and offer him uh, on Mount Moriah. So they make the trip, three-day trip. They get there, and they're going up the mountain, and uh, the son says, um, Father, here is the wood and here is the fire, but where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? Now, folks, I'm just, I'm sorry, but that's the question for today. 
Where is the lamb? Where is he in our lives? You know, we get, we get the wood, we get the fire, and we try to get a revival going, and we try to get something going, and we might even strike the wood, but no, nothing ascends that pleases the Father. It's just like, well, you know, we, get, we, we try to use a service or something else to get us excited instead of just giving him the lamb, lamb outside of the service, you know. All right, so <clears throat> Abraham says um, that God will provide himself a lamb. Okay. God will provide himself a lamb. All right. So let's see. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, he said, Here am I. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, see, seeing that thou hast withheld thy son, thine only son from me. Not withheld thine only son from me. Um, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Okay, so um, the, 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 the father and the son are enacting something here for the glory of God, but they don't know what they've gotten into. Um, Isaac, you're not the lamb but you need a lamb, and I provide that. You know, and that's the, it's at that place that he called him Jehovah Jireh. My provider. You know, anybody ever heard that song? Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Okay, but he's not providing the lamb as a, a momentary help. He's providing the lamb because Isaac cannot be because of his very nature and will not be because of his very nature be the lamb but he's giving him a lamb he's given us a lamb inside of us <laughs> i mean there's hope he's given us a lamb inside of us and his goal is not condemnation that we can't do it. His goal is open your eyes and look what I've provided. Because there it was. And he lifted up his eyes. See, we've got to get our eyes off of the altar that doesn't have us on it. And going, I don't know if I want to get up there, you know, all that kind of stuff. Don't focus on you being on the altar. The lamb, whether, whether it's 2,000 years ago or Christ in you, focus on the one who willingly lays down his life, gives himself for the Father, for the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And he called the name of the place God will provide, but, it, but from then on, Abraham saw his son differently from him because he had died in his heart on his way up there. He was going to give him. So he died to that born son. And he saw him now as the one who's provided with a lamb that will bring forth the seed that's going to change and will bring forth the whole nation and going to change everything. There's, there's the hope. And Paul comes along and he looks at us with all the problems he sees in all of the churches that he has to write about, situation after situation, book after book of the New Testament. And he speaks these words to every one of them. I mean, in the spirit. And he says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, lamb in you. That's your hope. Cling. You know, I remember, what is it, in Acts uh, 11, I can't remember what verse, but he's talking about, in, I think Barnabas is encouraging them, and he says, cling to the Lord with purpose of heart. Don't just cling to the Lord. Don't just claim 
Christianity. Don't just claim ministry. Cling to the Lord with purpose of heart. And that, if, if we're like the prodigal and we've been far away, there's a bit of a journey we have to make back. There's a bit of a journey to get to the father's face, to, to see his heart toward his son in us, to hear his acceptance, his extreme acceptance by the son. It's a bit of a journey to get to that point. So, so we end now with a prayer, okay? We end now with, Lord, get us on that. Father, we just come in your son's name, not our own name. And we don't just come for what we want or what we think we need. But we want you to, to, to have the son of your heart, to receive that back. And we want him to be our portion, just as you are his portion, Father. We want to be like that bride that clings to him and watch him cling to you, Father, and watch the flow and the ascending incense fill the room, fill the, fill the world. And so, Father, we are, we are never as close as we need to be. Help break down any thoughts of, that we're okay, but not with condemnation, not with condemnation, but so with, it would work in us purpose of heart. Lord, not with condemnation. You love us. You brought us in already. We are sons of God by Christ, but you want our eyes to be open to the son that you, the son of your love that you've placed us in. And so... Father, we ask you to work on us, whether we're in the hog pen or, or a few steps out heading home or, or many miles away because in some cases we're far away. But you do it. You do it. You do it. And if our motive is wrong to just come back for food because we're, we're so messed up, use whatever. Use our carnal motives to get us close enough that you can break those carnal motives and give us true son motives by the son. So whatever it takes, whatever method, whatever pattern, just minister to our heart and prepare the way and prepare the path and prepare our hearts to catch a glimpse of the Father's heart and the Father's hands as he places the things that only belong to the Son upon us. And we see, I already had the Son all this time, and I wasted it. Help us, Father. Thank you. We love you. We, we pray this in faith, not in condemnation. And we stand together, Father, not just one person or individuals praying this. We, we cleave to the Lord and his body, even as Mary of Bethany did, ministered to his body with purpose of heart, with purpose of heart. And we do it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Precious Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Well, as usual, if um, you need to go, you can absolutely feel free. You can even stand around and talk a little bit. But if you see someone still just seeking the Lord, be mindful of them and kind of, you know, it doesn't mean you can't talk. Just try not to disturb too much. All right. Bless you guys.